Right, that's us live. Episode 4 of the Metal Approach Podcast. I'm here with Owen O'Neill, Triple O. Yes, bro. Thank you very much, Pleasure. bro, for being here. If you don't know Owen, he's a pro boxer. He knows his fair share of hard training. He's been in a few hard fights. I've watched him myself. So you're not talking to someone here. It's, it's not his first day. This guy knows. Despite how young he is, he knows what it's at. He knows how to work. He knows how to fucking fight. So we're here to have a wee bit about his life story. Find out more about him. And see where he's going in his career. So let's start simple. How did you start? When, when did you start fighting and why did you start fighting? Well, I always played football. Um, my two cousins were boxers. And then I was always out with them. And they, they always used to get the gloves on at the back and face on. We they, we uh, take, take on. And they always used to beat me up all the time. And then I started going to the doctor club with them. And um, one day a week, twice a week, because they always had two in front of me. The dollars are, fuck it. But uh, just really, just, football was always my first sport. And then. Um, just done boxing really, just to learn how to fight really. It's a yeah, street, you know what I mean? No, just to sort of think you're a hard man out and about. Um, Everyone who's watching this probably are from Belfast and then around and around the same area, so they understand that it was a fucking tough mm-hmm. place us yeah. growing up. Like, we didn't see it that way, but it was tough growing right. up. If you weren't well, fighting, you weren't normal. You went to Bonnie and all too, mate. I went to Bonnie, like, I just wanted to learn how to fight. Really, I didn't really care yeah, about boxing. More See, high time I went to high time, exactly the same thing. We used to fight with fucking Barney people. Yeah. It was just mad. You couldn't even get on the same bus sometimes. I wouldn't, <laughs> run, I wouldn't get on the bus going to school up Yandon Road unless Big Murph was with me or something. <laughs> no, because they, they were scared of him because he's a yeah. big fucker. No, I mean, I was like, I can't go by myself. Yeah, well, I, I was a chubby kid. Like, the first year I was fat. Like, oh, I wasn't chubby, I was fat. And then started doing it boxing. And, uh, and second year is when I started having proper boxing fights, but I still play football. And I, I, I never took boxing serious until I was 22, but I'm only 24 now, you know what I mean? Most people just don't realise, I think, until they, they do a bit of it, and then there's, after a while, they're actually being there. It's, the yeah. thing, like, it's not like football, boxing, kickboxing. It's all about yourself. Like, it, once you do it, you realise uh, you're going to walk yourself every single day, and once you, it's really learnable. Mm-hmm. That's the thing See, I love about A football team needs 10 hour bears, are they? Exactly. No one's having rely it. on you, know, well, you can help you out. But if you're um, fucking at the best, you can get held up by a football team. You can't yeah. get held up by your coach. Mm-hmm. And you're inside that ring. Mm-hmm. You're by yourself. Champion, so it's Some guys you. are trying to fuck uh, you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. But uh, I just sort of, I've, I never really cared about fighting or being a champion or an Ulster champion, Ulster champion or an All Ireland champion. I just wanted to learn how to fight out in the street, and that, that's all I went for. I used to go down to, I used to play football all week and then go to a boxing club on a Friday with my two cousins and then do a bit of sparring with and then think it was a hard man to go up to Glen Gormley and then. Maybe fight this one or fight that one. That's, that's where it was back in. Like, I was only 15, like, you know what I mean? Ah, uh, it's different, different motivations altogether. Like. Uh, just as long as I, I got older and started getting better, and then um, my two cousins won't make it, but if I sparred them too, I like it. Send them up! Probably <laughs> probably up. Probably <laughs> probably Come probably, on, lads! You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and they know what I like, but they used to. I've got a lot of that too. A lot of, a lot of, I was learning like MMA is different, different game all the time. Like, but it's uh, there's so much shit to learn. I mean, the first time you do MMA, it's not like obviously boxing is hard too. But when you're learning, there, there's so much different variables in MMA. You'll so see so. many times I got choked by a kid that was 65 kilo. You know, <laughs> or not, I, I see these kids and I was going like, I'm gonna fuck this guy up. And I was looking around me going, hope no one sees us. I'm gonna yeah. smash him down. And I was more fucking wrong. Like, it's just you get ripped apart by these young skinny guys or big tall lanky kids. Even guys who are about 20 stone and look as if they haven't got no skill at all, they if fuck they me up, uh-huh. I've got serious skill. So for years you get that, you get that for years at the start, you have to look. Then eventually you start coming to yourself and start shaping up. Yeah. You start figuring out, I, I could probably do this. I only started shaping up about six months ago. Probably. I couldn't believe it, see when I first met, I've known you a lot longer than yeah. I knew you were a fighter. I've, uh-huh. I've known, like I've had you on Facebook and I've been asking you and you're friends with friends of mine, like you're yeah. a friend of Jay and stuff. I would always see it. and. One day you were a wee bit fucking uh, chubby, chubby out on a drink every other weekend, yeah, on the street still, and then all of a sudden uh, I see you hitting the bag, and I was like, fuck me, he's lost about three stone. Uh, they were, you were taking, you were hitting that, that left hook out in the bag, it's, that's lethal. He actually inspired me to do a left hook video. Uh, it was a, uh, not done a right hook video, I think, but it was. Do you know what actually Canal done that? It was like a week after uh, you put yours up. Well, Canal Alvarez done that on his Instagram, and I was like, fuck, I want to do that. Uh, then nice. I got like three weeks later. Then I, I searched on YouTube like yeah. hook and, and uh, like body hook and 
head who tutorials and it was like Tony Jackley's come up here, so that's him. Uh, he's been, he's an he's an Olympic boxer. He won uh, he won a few uh, he won the Olympic thing for England. Uh, but he lives in California now. Uh, Actually, here I'll show you him up here. We'll get him up on the laptop here and show you because this guy's fucking good. See for like in, instructional videos and yeah. and then he got. I see, and I, I sort of copy one of his videos in terms of like the way to, the way to teach it. Yeah. He done a shit video, like a shit hook, and then he done it properly. You know, like between every video, it was like a slideshow. It was only like ten seconds long. This guy here, he has a place called Boxing Burnley. Yeah, he trained uh, right. the old day Wilder and stuff like for that last fight. Done the pause with him. Yeah, there you go, that big madness, seven times an Iceland European champ, number one educator on Instagram. He calls himself, but here I don't know if that's true, but maybe. I would probably agree with some of his stuff. He's he's fucking oh, good, like yeah. punching hard. He teach you what's wrong and what's right. I like all that. Though. I like the way there's two different. Do it wrong. You know what I mean? Do it right, there's the yeah. wrong version and the right version. Yeah. Watch this here. Now show it. Now show the TV. Show the screen. For it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say the shamrock. That's a shamrock punch. Hundred percent. See, that's the way I got that tutorial. Or if you can see that. <laughs> oh, big grunts are cracker. Shout out Tony Jeffries. You retweet this later on, son. <laughs> Unbelievable. But that's a good, he does stuff like that a lot. You know, how to fit in. And I, I really, like, I see boxing to me. You'd be surprised how, like, I do kickboxing. I've done kickboxing for like 12 years now. You'd be surprised how terrible I am in actual boxing. It's fucking unbelievable. You see, you see whenever my coach says, right, where is them hands now? Yeah. Just boxing, no kicks, no knees. You're fucking lost. Right. I'm lost, right. mate. You'll see. We're going to do a bit of pads afterwards. Right. You'll yeah. see. It's it's fucking. It's funny. Like back on your page. Here, I'm going to show the people your page. You want to give one a follow here? Yeah. Watch it. He's got four, four wins, zero defeats in his pro career so far. Right. Here's his name. That's his Instagram page. Get on that. Appreciate it, Hundred percent. We get a few more follows here. You don't want to be coming in and following him in a few years' time when he's got 30 right. wins. You're being too late on the yeah. bomb wagon. Start now. And when he's starting now, take it on, support him from the start. Get on the journey. Right, so, who, uh, so what else was saying that? We're going to say about your, your coaches and what way you use training as opposed to like what I do. Yeah, I would be like, when we go in this size and our coach could say, I mean, it could be a thousand for at least be fucking 300 of these, do this non stop. And so you're, ca you're just, just chaos. But obviously, you've got a lot more technical right, ability. Well, I get that. Uh, we wouldn't do anything like that, like a box, just strictly boxing, like. Strictly boxing. Oh, I think. The way my coach sees it, I think yeah, they see it as like, if you're not, you can learn to do the technique afterwards, you got to be ready to do five mm -hmm. rounds first, man, I think. Well, we, well, we have Monday nights and Fridays are our sprint days, but that's after boxing. But what we see when I'm in camp, so Monday, when I say Friday, it's like conditioning days where your sprints after boxing. So you do the boxing and then go to sprint? Yeah, and then go to sprints, and then Tuesday and Thursday, Boxing and then strength after so just weights. I often do sparring. Sparring, well, with D Waltz, it's every Friday. So well, it's, called, it's called Doghouse Fridays. Doghouse Fridays. Yeah, it's on Facebook, isn't it? With my first coach. Jerry Mann, I'm Jerry Mann. 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 I want to keep your brains intact. We have, uh, we have changed it though. Like, what I do now with a couple of friends is you're going to join here anyway yourself yeah, and, yeah. on Sundays. Because what I want to do is break the mold. Everyone's fucking doing the same thing. I told you before with, with, with on the, the video here of how my life was just every weekend. You were training Monday or Friday, giving the big end that you done MMA, and then you're out and drinking and fucking taking right. drugs all weekend, and then you're back to helping people during the week, and then not helping your fucking self right. during the weekend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, so that was an absolute fucking nightmare, that. But I decided to try and break the mold there and say that if we organise sessions on Saturday and Sunday now, because that's one thing no one ever does. Like, yeah. so many people train three times a day, Monday yeah. to Friday, and don't Monday train the weekends. So, we're, so now we're going to do make sure everyone's fresh. Routine, then, you're not coming you know, in here to do spawn on, on Sunday if you're down, trust uh, me. But you're coming because you've told me you're coming. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's the way it is. The that's boys know that's a problem. They're not letting me down, so we're not telling me that. And <clears throat> the common you'll see later on, there's got to be a bit of skill, but don't really hit hard. Yeah. It's all about well, learning. Well, see, see what you're saying there. See, on the at the minute, so Lewis Crocker and Paulie McCoy have fights coming up. They're fighting, and Lewis is fighting August for the European title. Paulie's fighting 
the end of August or start of September. And on Tuesday and Thursday, we would do like schools more. Uh, like, so it's not full, it's yeah. 60%, you know what I mean? Well, we would do, I would do Canada, like, like, it's just, like, you know, I would do a demonstration first, and I'd hit someone a few steps in the head, yeah. that's the way it is. Because yeah. you can feel the impact, but there's yeah. no fucking serious, you're not closing your fist, tight, you're not smashing people. Right. Nice and easy, nice and flow, you want to be able to do, because we were, we were hitting 22, 23 rounds, couldn't do that full, you fall straight, right. no way you could do that, you know what I mean? No, no one's doing 22, 24 rounds, minutes, we're doing yeah. two and a half or three minutes around. One person jumps out, one person stays in. So sometimes I would always be the one to stay in for three or four because I'm going to go for a fight myself here. Like I said, yeah. that's why I want to stay in for as long as possible mm. until I need a break. And you've always got the chance to sit out. It's always good. There's always another guy sitting over here, another guy sitting yeah, here. Right, right. right, he goes, you're always getting the fresh guy. So uh, if you're if you're in fake camp, that's that the best thing. I'll be stuck in there and he's going to run fresh. Pause the head of me. Right. Oh, right. 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 I'm not before to do a bit of positive as well to see yeah. the difference because there's no. Uh, Everyone in my teams, either a self proclaimed a karate expert or a BHA expert or a kickboxing expert, no boxer. Boxer, no. no actual, no just, no just boxers. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely. Not get a boxer, a boxing coach in there. Not really. Well, the best, the first time I learned about boxing, and it actually stuck with me was Darren Corbett. It was like fucking about ten years ago. He came to our club and like and he done one or two sessions with Big Michael Lopey and and Jimmy. He showed us the simple things. He he, he watched us first, which was really good about him. That, you think big darn, big W fucker and big hard, just he doesn't sit <laughs> as simple as this, straight in, beat the fuck out of your neck. But he, he came in and he showed a bit of composure and he stayed back for a while and he watched us, he watched us all hit the pads, kicking and punching, he watched how we move. And then he came in and says, right, but I noticed every single one he was doing was this, was that, don't do this, this is going to get your head took off. If you become a guy against a guy, the only difference was us as kickboxers now we're going against other kickboxers. Yeah. But if you had a team against a guy who had a boxing background, uh, you were always getting caught. Uh, There's a big guy, George Jamie or something like that, he trains down with John Tazzy now as well. He done boxing before he done kickboxing. And see how many times he called all of us out. He does know. Now you shouldn't be able to actually see the legs of your legs. You should be able to keep people back. But he knew how to get in there because he knew the kickboxing too. And I always got my head wrong. It's always like fucking bells ringing in your head. And we hooks him. You weren't necessarily hurt. Yeah, but, but he just hit it properly, you're connected. It's more like a mental thing, you're getting picked off every. Your head's really yeah. And I'm also <laughs> going, you're thinking, fuck, I should stop down at the same time, I'm not actually hurt. Yeah. You realise you're not made of glass, you can take a wee slap yeah. every night game, but the difference between people hit me harder than him, but they weren't, they weren't good enough, they weren't good shots, but he hit me every time I felt every single fucking time. He probably doesn't know this now, you fucking know, he probably won't. <laughs> I'm going up the spar you now, it's not the chains. <laughs> Right, so we we'll talked about your we we'll talked about your record. What about your pro debut? What was the guy I watched fight again? Was, yeah, was that was my last one? Mate. The last one, funny guy or something. Uh, he was he was not he was unstoppable. Like but, at the uh, start, he seemed unstoppable. You ended up fucking coming out and top. You never stopped ever. Like, you were relentless. You had to be strong mentally for it. The first but see, see pro debut. Mate, I, normally boxers get like like proper bumps for their debut. They like, get one slap ahead of them. Oh, it's like, man, the guy I fought was like. Three wins and like three defeats or something. Like, it wasn't he a proper, had, he it wasn't had a proper journey, man. Do you know what I mean? Oh, he had like, his taste. Like these men with his fucking cracking shorts. Like journey men, you think just have a pair of everlast shorts? You know what I mean? Fuck, he gets this guy here. Is that the um, guy I fight? The man, no money was worn at all. Making me think. Fucking, he, he was slicked out, like, and then <laughs> uh, he was good, mate. That, like, that was the best fight in it, and I'm glad because all my mates were on me. Like it was exciting too. The first time I seen it was actually on someone's Snapchat, believe it or not. I didn't see the fight, I didn't know the fight, and I was in the house, and someone, obviously, everyone was at it. Uh, everyone yeah, on my I Snapchat was at it. Oh, my whole list, uh, my whole friend list was at it, so they were all putting videos up, like, fucking real hair, and I was still all saying, like, fuck for you. But I was, uh, like, on Snapchat, you could see him, he clips, there was all different clips, people putting uh, different ones up, and I was like, fuck, it looks like he can fucking I mean, go. That's, like, but I'm glad, fucking, what's the point going in and not somewhere for? Seconds, you know, and what's the know, point in fucking? You see me because I only had a small amateur background. Yes, I've boxed since I was like 12, but I didn't take boxing serious till I was like 21, 22. And uh, so I ended up learning every fight. Like, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, like I'm profiting every fight. Like, I'm still apprentice, sort of. You will agree, you, like, you can't, there's certain things you just can't learn. Uh, just, that's as simple as that. The things you have. You, you only learn while you're in, in that, that ring, you know what I mean? Yeah, I try to learn my to teach myself about fighting, about getting into so you don't learn what you need to know until no, you get in against get someone in. who wants to fucking <laughs> hurt you. No, Somebody see what way you deal with it. Mm -hmm. People forget that. Then my second fight where you just sit there until you get hurt. My second fight and my second pro fight like, like you're still you should be beating these people up. Like beating like according to other people. You should be beating oh you know what I mean? My second fight, my second second round and I got knocked out. I got I got a crack. 
cracker. You can hear me in the video, it's on MPKs. Um, YouTube. Trying to have a look at that. Um, your mom hits me and I go, ah, like that, and then near fall, but actually, I held on and started falling back. Probably shouldn't have, but um, lucky enough for like 20 seconds right there, right? And I got back there. The thing I always right. say is, uh, especially talking to young guys, stop it. As I've only realized that's coming from 30. I only realized that see whenever I was walking in the ring or a, or a competition, whatever it may be, and you're thinking, fuck, I'm scared or nervous or uh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Yeah. Like, you always think about all the worst shit in the world. Yeah, in your own head, right? Yeah. This is the thing. This is the fucking cat, the sweet spot. So is the fucking other guy. <laughs> no one remembers. No one me. thinks like that. The other guy's obviously shit himself too. See, when I walk in and I see him, go, he's a big lad, fuck here. I'm not a wee lad, like. No, I mean, you're in the same, someone's well, looking at you, you're in the same, mate. So you don't ever think, what's he thinking? Yeah, he and see the thing you said about it being on top, about him putting the pressure on you, and you're fucking going, maybe they should have pushed back. Yeah. That may have been his very last puff, no, man, that fucking thing. So well, people forget that too. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're getting a full lane of someone, they're getting down, you're punching the area, they're ground pounding down, mate, whatever it is. There's a good chance he's on the last of his fucking rope here, he's going to be very little time before he's going to pass. All that. So if you can hold out more times than enough, you get the better. And I think you've seen a fight in the UFC or, or a 12 round boxing fight where fucking, like someone's got the head puff up in 10 rounds, and the lad in 12, not, not fuck you mate, good night. It's so either it's her, she had first fight, I got her song, and I heard all the boys singing and all. I was going, fuck, I'm fucking not good here. Oh, they're saying there's only one on and eight of that. the guy was just like hanging, what's he, I got not good here, fuck everyone. I'm going to have to go and find that out there, I don't think I'm going It's on a... Why take an MTK? Lord face Conroy. I think I mean. Conroy. Because I'm going to watch this. Uh, I'm not mad, I'm going to watch it later. I want to make sure it's on my screen though. I'm not forget it. What are we on? Uh, so, should we delay stream? Should we early? Because one that says that. Does that? No. Stephen Ward, Liam Conroy. That lasts for 15 minutes. Yeah, it'll take four hours, one you need to look for. Four. Like was, that, was that their fight just for the minutes now? Nah, nah. Fuck. That was the best fight. That was for the year, man, I think. No doubt. I have a go at that later as well. Yeah. I, once I put my podcast up, I had to watch something else and then keep my head away. I mean, you see him while we sitting there fucking chatting. <laughs> then you get a view. The very first time I've done a podcast, I've watched him all the way. Oh my god, 100 views! That's the I was. <laughs> fucking nightmare! My first ever. First ever. Uh, I have a look at that later, mate. 100%. Um, I'm first grade anyway, 6 o'clock. So. Don't have to wait for ages, it's not so worth people anyway. Yeah. Well, like, uh, right, so obviously it takes a lot of mental strength as well as this physical strength. People don't get that as well as many people, you know, start off doing a bit of fighting training and they can do the training, but once it comes to fight camp, uh, it changes up and they just mm -hmm. can't really fucking hack it. So it takes a lot of mental fortitude and mental strength to do it. And you haven't actually had the best time yourself the last the last week way back well, then. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't. Uh, well, my, my, my last camp, uh, last camp was tough. Like, you've, you've had your losses. Camp. You've had your losses with what? Uh, yeah. Had a wee chat about it before, see if you were okay talking about it. But yeah. like our reserve, Jerry, everyone knew Jerry. Yeah. That was a good meteor. Yeah. Very good meteor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> even again good good company with stuff yeah. because, like I said, yeah, I didn't know the guy, yeah. but I knew everyone who did know him, mm -hmm. and. I felt like I knew him once after he did that because everyone was telling me all the stories about him. Everyone, yeah. Absolutely everyone. It's crazy. And it's one of the one of the M ones, it's the whole this whole place is just a fact it's so badly by mental health seriously. I think it was a wee uh we thought he cold whenever he ended up dying, well it was Maggie's I don't know how to say it's kissing the man on the same one, but he died something to do with Tatum to me. Yeah. But the thing I was whenever he was on the news, he was telling us about it. it was all like, since I've not long ago, I reckon like, yeah, all these people are dying like yeah. fucking, they're dropping like flies over here. Yeah. But I remember him saying, "It's the school I went to, Holy Cross Boys." So, you know, no, no, I did Holy Cross Boys, and so was Daddy Cole. But then it showed in the news saying there was twenty-seven kids since the very first one who killed himself in Northern Ireland. There was twenty-seven kids who killed themselves from that uh, school since that time. So that's since what since Phil McTaggart was in the country. It must be from that, 27 kids and us. Because see when I was in that school, there was only 13 people in the class, or 14. It wasn't that big of a class, so that's two fucking classrooms. And you realise that? That's fucking... Things like that, it gives you stuff you're like... Oh. People say it's not that big, sure, but sure it's drugs, sure it's this, sure it's that. Well, no, Daddy, I'm an athlete. 
hundred percent. And and here. The guy had the impact fucking in thirty. Since he was fucking <laughs> twelve. <laughs> I don't yeah. see for us. I'm sitting on fucking walls, <laughs> shredding, you know. Fuck me, yes, Ken must do a million stuff. I, I remember uh, his girlfriend, my girlfriend, or we went to Puerto Rico in 2017. Well, before when we booked it together, I was obviously sent away 80 kilos or something. <laughs> well, no, actually, I was about 90, fucking probably the time. But I fucking, that's my goal, really. I, I literally need to get in shape here because there's no way I'm going to hold holiday with Jerry Thompson. I'm uh, getting focused with him. I end up losing no, loads of weight for that holiday. Then that set me on. You're almost like having your growing up with Ram Burnett, too. You know, one of them, like 10 years of age, had like a fucking 30 pack. <laughs> 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 so it's just shit. Exactly. Like, I remember going to the gym all the time, and then after you go, Mom, we'll get a Reamer Thalms, or Mom, we'll get this here. Oh, you're all right. Oh, I can't do that. See if I eat one chip, I'm like, I'm like, I have friends over who fucking could eat kebabs and then train and that kind of thing. I'm looking at ham sandwiches and get a pound. Like, today, I know I'm going to be with you. But there's other people probably have a fry. I thought myself, I mean, when I wasn't taking seriously, like we were talking about earlier on, like whenever we were on the, the drinking drugs of your yeah. weekend, it was like you were still training MMA and still saying that you were you were able to jump on the like and you were just running about fat oh, all well, the thank, Thankfully, I changed that the last, well, to be fair, my, fir- my first fight, after that fight, for like six weeks, I had shit constantly. But that's all right, because you at least you know, really you know you're going back. But then I realized, but now I've realized that it's a life thing. You don't do that. Hundred percent. But do you know Tony O'Neill? He's he's a nutritionist. I don't. Uh, even Tony James. Oh, do I yeah. actually? Yeah. I don't know. Well, well, he, he's my nutritionist. I'm working with him now, and he has changed my life. I had his. Uh, well, Big Taylor Sims was on the first podcast. He's not working with him at the minute, and he's actually fucking believe it or not. I know I'm been doing training for coaching for years, and I obviously know a bit about the tracing, but yeah. see when someone tells you to do it, that's all you need. Sometimes yeah. you need someone to have a bit of direction. And I've been sort of, like, you know about your calories, you know about your fucking food, but I just force me to eat more mm-hmm. what I was actually going to. So just, you're always selling yourself short. I was always eating a wee bit less, training hard as fuck, never stopping, the size were amazingly intense. Yeah. But I wasn't having enough calories, so I was always yeah. burnt out. And what I noticed, no matter what, you always make up for your calories. Yeah. You're doing tracing on the telly. Yeah. If you yeah. go skimping on the calories every single day, yeah. and no good, right? Uh, you're, you're doing well, you lose a wee bit of weight. Yeah, yeah. You're you will hit the kitchen like a uh, dog, and yeah. you'll eat everything. Take, 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 take that's that's what it is. Strokes, and then you're off, like, you're off it for a wee bit, and then all of a sudden you're fucking... Oh, I was explaining to someone yesterday, he wanted to know about losing weight. It was my mate's mummy, and I says, do you, do you follow your man Ben Cumber? On, yeah. Well, he put, a, he put a video up one day explaining and this was a this was a mini percent. Like I it was such a simple video from the product, but he explained it so well that uh the same idea if you're skimming on your calories, he ended up doing a sort of like a test of himself. He was eating the right food, eating the right calories and make sure his expenditure was all right. He knew what he was burning, he knew what he was eating. But he always wanted sastas, he wasn't allowed as part of his diet, but he wanted sastas. So what the guy done was I'm nearly sure it's on the percent now he posted that he Counted the sausages from the back of the pack, right? So he scanned them, <laughs> counted them, then he grilled them. Right. And he grilled them, right? So then he ate the sausages, didn't account for the fat coming out of the sausages. And he woke up at 12 o'clock that night and had everything in the house. And he, this is a guy who's just, a, this is an elite guy who knows about nutrition, knows about it. He couldn't believe that he broke the guy, he snapped and had everything. And then he realized that's what it was. I needed them extra grams of fat in that because I had counted them as part of my calories. Yeah. I didn't have calories. That's, he was so fine tuned that. The sauces, the fat man in the sauces, uh, cut them over, mm-hmm. and fuck them up big time. Like just shows you, but that's how easy it is. And your body's fine tuning like that. That's how easy it is to notice. Yeah. But when you're eating junk all the time, crap, yeah. it's, it's, you really, you don't see it at all. But your hair, thanks for food, food and stuff, you know what I mean? Like yours, like yesterday, I didn't, I didn't have a takeaway, like easily, every weekend. I was, I still haven't had mine, I don't know, I've been thinking well, about it. Every Sunday, I would have a takeaway, that's what, like, what I'm allowed, but. You see my post this morning, I had the fucking sitting with bleed effects. Oh, I see. And where them fuckers waiting, I was gutted. That's it, yeah. But it's just half, I know I'm only allowed one, I'm allowed one bad yeah. meal, and I'm not, that's not going to be it. Like a fry's not it. See, like, now that I'm eating one bad meal, like, see before, see if I have a bad pizza, I had to put on like two, three kilos, like, without doing it. Oh, it's I easy, mate. It's easy. Two, three you don't digest yeah, that easy. See, now, mate, but see, now, I'm waking up point three over. If but you're like, training. Like, oh, I. My body, I don't know what you're burning, not so much easier. It's actually burning the energy. You'd be surprised how many things you're eating and think you're burning the energy yeah. off. 
and you're not. Whenever you go to those real sizes, like your fake cans, different yeah. so you're you're depleting yourself completely all the time. Right? So when you eat it, it doesn't really fucking make it matter, really, mm-hmm. if you're training so hard. Like I, I remember one of my fights, or the third fight, my third fight, I done a really bad weight cut. I got the weight completely wrong. I had to do an hour and forty minutes to dead away in. You want to be walking about not that far away from your cutting weight, no? I mean, I'm sitting 74 point, what was that this morning? 74.5 or 6. I've never been that before. Like, I haven't got a fake come up, and I've never been this late. That's what you want to like, be. At last week, I was 75 two weeks before I went in. Oh, 75 kilos, and I have 74.5 or 6. That may, I mean, you'll perform so much better. Well, mate, I'm hoping the fake, and then you get this next one. No one really knows, so that's. I was super late with you. So well, I, was, was, I was I don't know if you listened to the Peter Lavery podcast the, the last week, but no, he was we, we both talked about the guy we you know that's part of our team, Paul Redmond, he was on the UFC, you know, before he had a few fights in the UFC. Yeah. But when he was on he got a phone call, I, I forget the exact details, but he got a phone call by the UFC because he said up here, you can fight here. Right. But it's over it's in a week and you have to cut thirty five pounds. Right? It was something like thirty-five pound. I think he cut thirty-three pound, right? He cut something like thirty plus pounds in the space of a week. He got that. He got that away, and well, it's it's sixteen or so, isn't it? Fourteen, right? Two point two pounds each. Over ten. It's a lot. It's a lot. He done it in a week, and he cut he cut just short of the target. So he had thirty-three pounds instead of thirty-five. He took half his money off him in the purse. That was ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. That still happened. The EFC are obviously great. The watch and the great for the big fighters. Yeah. And when you're a star now, you're fucked. Like her, the other guy in his team, his team, his training partner, Nate Siri, as well, got like fight of the night. He was only getting paid very little money, like not enough to even fly over to America and back and all. So he was doing that there, paying off his own back, working like fuck back home. Still every morning he was up running to work, working all day, going to training. And there's a guy who got fight of the night, 50 grand, and then got like tax took off him. He ended up losing like 15, 16 grand or something like that there just for tax. And it's fucking like, so these, these boys are training so hard, training so hard, and they have to keep an hard job of it. It's fucking mad. You're, you're the same, you're the same, but you're a professional boxer. Buy him on ticket fee, so. Have to sell them. Have to sell them, and that's it. It's not like, fuck, it's crazy. Like, uh, people don't understand it. My, my cousin fought. You need to get the followers. It's it's oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's Celtic. I think I'm a very lucky, like very lucky person. We're lucky you got the friends yeah, and family like, support. The way my promotion company is, like you have to sell more sadly tickets before you make a penny. And not many. So they have to get sadly worth themselves. Not many people sell like fifty tickets. Oh, it's a hard ass as well to get people to come out. Unless you're dad, you want to fucking perform. Oh, like, see if cunts come out to pay thirty or forty quid a ticket. Me, I don't need. Car from 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 Car I just happily lost weight there by pure bonus. I was just, I was just taking clean food and being yeah. battered just from your own head. Right. I found that out by going to doctors, getting talk, uh, pillar to post, passed around to see if I'm not reading the right content or watching the right yeah. stuff and uh, doing the right thing on Facebook and eating the right food and training every day. Yeah. It's not a fucking chance. That's yeah. why I'm in the office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got it pretty in check yeah. most of the time. Yeah. Pretty yeah. alright. Right. But if you're not on the ball, you're fucked. They see what I'm making. It's like, do you do you break every now and again? Like yeah. one of them weekends where you go out and you fucking eat, you drink ten pints and drink whiskey and then you're 
next day you're laying there fucking eating pizza and all that cause me fucked for two weeks. Yeah. I don't lose like three days like long cause for two days. <laughs> I'd be fucking two, ah, two three weeks. weeks. Ah, it's good. Yeah, you'd be about Monday going to work for a full week and you'd be with your mates all week, you're training like fuck. See Friday I'm still snapping people. Still going like you leave me alone with you, you fucking <laughs> do my head and you've asked that question five times. Thanks, thanks me and I'm actually not like that. I hate I don't wanna be that guy, man. Everyone knows me and uh, has a decent idea of me, I'm dead on, you know, I could be fucking yeah. you can come to me and very approachable to see that like not a fucking yeah. chance. But, 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 I had a few drinks last last weekend, sure, and uh just the next day. I never thought I'd have a few drinks. I've only started now. I actually had a bottle of wine, you know, a week, and it was just a bottle of wine. <laughs> just a bottle of wine. Like, that's it's never been a thing for me. Normally, oh, normally I drink three and I make it oh, yeah, around fuck, yeah. take around face. It's three <laughs> bottles of wine, and I go on the whiskey and sip it myself. <laughs> listen to Ari songs and best life and all. And I hang a plays. I hang a fucking drink and sit there, and people are going, go to bed. I can't really. Oh, fuck, I'm alright. That's the way I get there. Yeah. That's me, one man army sitting there, <laughs> fucking watching some TV. Drinking like whiskey, you're fucking sick. I tried to try and stay away in the whiskey cupboard. In the pallet, but no, I've got I've done long enough now that it's not a big thing no more. I'm yeah. starting to learn to have just a couple. You can have a chair, but I was on Dan that day at the Christian, after, after my chair, Christian, my mother walked in, just goes here with your chair, it sat on my chest. I was down there, her head, it felt like a breeze block. <laughs> that was the moment I changed everything. That was the God's honest. I said about before in the podcast, yeah. that was the, the moment I changed everything. I was like, I can't go out, I can't take drugs like that, I can't drink like that no more. That's ridiculous. I can't be ir- irresponsible because I'm going to land on my chair. And she's just gonna look at you, and you're not gonna be good enough to be your dad. Like. Mm-hmm. Normally, my chair sees me and goes, Happy days, let's yeah, play. Yeah, you're See that thing? Mm-hmm. That's like, fuck. Kicking the dumps. bins and all, walking past, come on, you. Yeah, and you're going, fuck, that's not the life you want to be. So, that was yeah, a quick yeah. and quick and vital well, lesson. Huh? Learn, yeah, yeah. never, never again. Uh-huh. Never again. I will never have a drink now unless I know I tell you I'm not being this house. <laughs> anywhere near this house. That's it. It's not fair. It's not right. That's good. Right, what time are we on there? We go get a week, we get now and get a bit of training done. We've done long enough for it, so we're around half an hour. Happy days. When uh, we'll talk about your next fight, when do you think that's going to happen before well, you go? Um, I, I would like to get one before Christmas, being realistic. I've got two for coming to London. Well, my, my next fight's going to be a six rounder. All my four rounds will be four rounders, so I'm just on Danny at a six rounder just to see how I go and see how. See how you feel, man. Go away, you know what I mean? Maybe shoot me longer rounds. You might have long rounds, you might have a lot long rounds in your thoughts. That last fight, my last round was my best round, you know what I mean? So You see a lot of fighters come out of fights and they're uh, wrecked, and then some people come out of them and they're like, fuck, I've done more for you. I think I really want to end it, the the more goes on, the more. Judging by looking at you, you start slow and then just completely just Uh, go balls out and then you don't stop. You've got to be pace. Well, I'm trying to turn myself in an all round fighter, but. Just, well, the last four fights have been like that. What I, the one I watched was like he let him set the pace, yeah. And then he went, That's not good enough for me. And he sort of got stuck in the yeah. man, and then he didn't, he couldn't cope, and he yeah. ended up in the fight, yeah, yeah. That's the way you should go. Is most mm. people feel that they dictate right away. Mm. Fuck out yeah. of it. See what he's got. I suppose, fucking, mm. if it's next fight, oh, different, it's 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 different, Trust me, you can see it. You can hear it. You can feel it. They can probably fucking hear it too. Right, so 100%. Percent. I can't wait to see it myself. I can't wait to get a bit, bit of pause on you yourself. Oh, Let's get it done. I mean, yeah. thank you very much. Happy days. That was short and sweet. Love it. That off.